friends, welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge, and it's not my usual fare, but I do sometimes review kitchen cutlery, and today we've got a utility knife by Spyderco. Yes, Spyderco has a budget utility knife. This thing is in the very low 20s, that's US dollars, and uh, it's got CTS BD1N stainless steel on here. BD1N's famous for being able to go up to 63 Rockwell hardness. Now, I don't have a hardness tester. I don't know how hard this is, and I haven't sharpened it yet. I will sharpen it later on in the video and give you my subjective feel on how hard I think it is. You know, I've sharpened thousands of knives, and so I can get a sort of feel, you know, consistently using the same type of stones, a feel and understanding of how hard this is, and so I'll let you know there. This knife comes four ways and in four colors. It's uh, black, yellow, red, and a sort of lime light green color. And the blade comes in four ways. I've got the pointed version with the plain edge. You can get the pointed version with a full serrated edge. You can get a blunt nose with a plain edge or a blunt nose with a serrated edge. And the cool thing is the two different types of serrations are different. So really we've got more than those different types we've got. Two different types of serrations and here we've got uh, two different types of tips. Let's get to the tabletop and we're going to talk about how well this performed in my testing. For those of you who are familiar with my channel, I did not do cutting demonstrations in my videos. I might show you a little bit of tomato cutting in this video for this. Anyhow, let's get to the tabletop and take a good look at it. Take a look at this knife. We've got, you know, this blade coming out. Of course, this is a polypropylene handle and it's not a full tang knife. This is not a hard use knife. I don't really care that it's not a full tang knife. That's not a big deal to me. Also, I don't really care that this is polypropylene. This is not an outdoorsman kind of knife. This shouldn't be sitting in direct sunlight for an extended period of time, you know, getting brittle and everything. But well, let's try to find out how far along the, uh, tang of the blade goes. There's a magnet and let's just push it along until it falls off. Oh, there must be a hole there. There we go. So it comes up probably almost halfway along. You know, it wants to be there, but you know, it's right there where it falls off. So yeah, almost halfway across. Not a big deal. Even if it's only a third of the way, I really don't think that's a big deal at all for this thing. The blade is a, a step-off blade. I guess that's why they call it a Z-cut. In Canada, we say Z, but this is an American brand. So for this video, I'm going to say Z-cut. So my fellow Canadians, you don't need to correct me. I think names belong to the people who give themselves the names or you know where the names come from. So I'm saying Z-cut. I like this standoff, which means you're, you can cut things without your hand getting in the way. So that's a good sign of a good utility knife. It looks, you know, funky and odd, but it's good that it stands off like that. Of course, you got the spider coat hole there. It comes down. We've got a, you know, drop point on the tip. And then we've got a belly. And the belly seems to go pretty much all the way along the blade. There's not a very long section here that's fairly straight. It's mostly belly. And so it's thin. It's a very thin knife. I'll give you the measurements later on. And that means that tip can pierce into just about anything. Of course, this might be a good knife for teaching how to cut with. Maybe you've got some young person in your life and they're just starting to learn how to use a knife. This keeps the hand far away from the cutting edge. And it's got protection in case you know, they bump into something. Their hand's not going to go over the edge. And if you get the blunt nose version, you know they're not going to pierce into things. Although this edge is fairly sharp. I got a really good score on that. It's a full flat grind. We don't have a sharpener's toil. We do have steel on the heel that sticks out past the edge. I don't like that. You can see that dark area. Uh, that's where it's not touching. I'd probably grind that back. And I think I will be keeping this knife. And so, you know, I'll just grind that back a little bit. I might not be keeping it. I might be putting it into, you know, a knife sale. You're probably wondering how well it cuts. Well, I found it to cut fairly well. It's a good utility knife, a uh, good, might not be a good sandwich knife because it's not great for spreading because it's so narrow, 
uh, you know, if you're using it to spread mayonnaise or something or Miracle Whip or what have you, some kind of condiment on some bread or whatever, it's nicer to have a deeper, you know, blade. It just makes spreading a little bit easier. But as a small kitchen prep knife, it's great. You know, it's not a chef's knife by any stretch, but it's not stupid small and it's quite useful. Slices quite well. This is an overripe tomato, so it's getting really squishy. But uh, yeah, it slices quite well. It slices quite well, even on a way overripe. You see how that's just denting in on a way overripe tomato. It's slicing quite well. And this is the factory edge. Anybody who knows anything about tomatoes, when they're way overripe and super soft, they're really hard to cut. How about the price? How much is this thing actually? Well, I said it's low 20s. I posted a video about this knife on Instagram and White Mountain Knives sold out just after that. So I guess some people liked my video. I like CTS BD1N. It's a good steel. Some people think it's a budget steel and some people think it's a high-end steel. I think it's right in the middle. I think it's a good mid-grade steel. Uh, the badging says Spyderco USA. Yeah, it's made in USA. Uh, there's the steel. CTS BD1N. And on this side, nada, nothing at all. At White Mountain Knives, this knife is $23.38. You take off 10% with my coupon code CCE. That makes it $21.04. Now, they did sell out. They sold out because I posted an Instagram video about this knife uh, a few weeks ago, and they sold out. So right now they're sold out but you can put yourself on the notify me list and when they get back in stock, you know, you can get it there. Uh, there's other places to get this. Amazon has uh, most of the versions of this knife. They're selling them for $25.50. And of course, you can get free shipping at Amazon. The next place to get this, if you live in the States, the next best place to get this is Deadwood Knives. I think they're in Texas, Deadwood Knives, uh, $23.38, which is the base price, I guess, that Spyderco wants to sell all these at. And they do free shipping to the USA, so that's probably a pretty good place to get it. I've also seen it at DLT Trading. They've got some of them down at $21.25. Now, DLT Trading is the best place to get this if you're a Canadian, because you can get it shipped to you uh, $14.11 US for shipping. In Canada, Amazon's charging $61.57 Canadian for this knife. Just totally ridiculous. Which Amazon Canada has always been terrible for knives, so that's just the way it is. Blades Canada might be better for you, you know, if the knife you want comes back in stock. So that's the price. That's where you can get it. I'll leave links down below to make it easy for you to get these knives. Let's go over all the sizes and dimensions. The weight of this knife, 29 grams. That's 1.02 ounces. Oh, by the way, the balance point. The balance point is right... <laughs> it's hard to balance it because it wants to fall down that way and that doesn't want to balance, but it's right there. So it's just into the handle, right where your index finger goes, so that's a good thing. The sharpness from the factory, 90 bess. 90 bess is very good. That's quite a bit sharper than average from the knives that I test, so I like that. The cutting edge length and the handle length, they're actually the same. So right at the heel of the blade here, <laughs> you know, either way, either end, 110.7 millimeters, 4.35 inches. The blade length, eh, from the tip to the closest spot on the handle here, it's about the same, 112.4 millimeters, 4.43 inches. The thickness of the blade, up here at the Ricasso, the flat section, the thickest part, 1.23 millimeters, 48 and a half thousandths of an inch. With that full flat grind, it's thinner than that right away. As soon as you get into the cutting area, even the spine of the blade is thinner than 48 thousandths. So it's a very thin knife. The blade depth, that's this measurement, its biggest, you know, I'm just measuring over the circle right there, over the hole. 17.7 millimeters, 0.697 of an inch. How thin is it behind the grind? I measured it in three places. The average is 0.41 millimeters, 16 thousandths of an inch. The grind angles, this side's got an average of 20.9 degrees. This side's got an average of 16.1 degrees. On this side, it started at 16.9 
14.7 in the middle and 16.8 at this end, 2.2 degrees of change, you know, just in that section there. On this side, it started at 21.4 degrees, and then it went to 19.6 and went up to 21.7 degrees. So the same thing, it's most shallow right in the middle, and then it's a little less shallow of an angle at the heel and the tip. Odd. Anyhow, that's the grind angles. The handle length, like I said, 110.7 millimeters, 4.35 inches. And the thickness of the handle, 10.6 millimeters, 0.417 of an inch. And the depth within the grip area, 23.2 millimeters, 0.914 of an inch. Uh, the grip area here, it's about 10 centimeters, about 4 inches. And the total length of this thing, uh, about 222 millimeters, like I said, 8.7 inches. Let me sharpen it myself, and uh, I'm going to put probably a 15 degree edge on this knife. You can see how wrinkly it is here. You know, this is an overripe tomato. Let me just hold it. And I'm going to hold the knife, if I get in front of the camera here, with just two fingers like this. That's how I'm going to hold the knife. And I'm just going to slide it across here. It just cuts like a dream. Just holding the knife like that. Two finger grip. And it just slides across. That is sharp. That's very sharp. This CTS BD1N steel is awesome. In my sharpening, I confirmed this is a very hard steel. It's at least 61, maybe 62, could be higher. My Venev diamond stones just sort of glided on it. It took me quite a while to sharpen this. Uh, I'm very happy with this steel on this blade. As I just showed you in the cutting demonstration, this is a good knife. Now, I don't know how good the serrated versions are. You know, serrated versions sometimes cut some things a whole lot better than, you know, plain edges do. But I wanted to test the plain edge because I can compare it to what I always test, and that's always plain edges. And this is just great. I can't be more happy. I think I'm going to buy more of these. I think there's going to be a lot of these that I give away as gifts because it doesn't cost a lot of money, <laughs> but you get a really, really nice knife. Yeah, it looks a little bit cheap with the polypropylene. If you've got skills, maybe you can rehandle it in some, you know, some wood if you're a woodworker and stuff. You know, that'd be kind of cool. Some nice coca bolo or babinga or if you want to go with colors again like they did, you know, some purple heart or yellow heart or whatever. All kinds of things you can do, but that's outside of the scope of this review. I like this knife. I'm happy with this knife. I recommend this knife. Thank you to my supporters. You guys are awesome. Thank you for everyone to like, share, comment, and subscribe this video. Uh, subscribe the channel. Uh, I get a lot of subscribers. I am, It's weird. I don't get an awful lot of views per video, and I think it's because I'm not super exciting. You know, I'm Jake the details guy, and I'm not Jake the joker. So I guess that's why I don't get as many views on my videos as I could. But if you like this video, please do share it with someone. And uh, remember, the links are down below if you want to buy one of these knives. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. <laughs>